Is that good? Uh, it's acceptable. Okay. I'm sure that people won't mind. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, wait. What does this do right here? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode eight, beta 84 for Friday, the 24th of June, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos. I'm in a damn hotel room. I'm in Anchorage, Alaska. I'm loving life. And that's Kent. How you doing, man? Excellent. <laughs> Good follow-up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, Amazing. not only is it Friday and it's time for Ritual Misery, this is the first turn episode of the one and only Amos. I am so glad to have you back. Cheers. Hmm. Uh, very nice. Very nice. So how you been, man? Um, uh, Busy. Like, busy. Like always. Um, no, but pretty good. Pretty good. I can't, I can't complain too much. Staying busy. Um, trying to have a good time when I can. Yeah. Um, last weekend was pretty good. Uh, Father's Day. Yeah. Did that whole thing. A little camping uh, trip. Oh, yes. So the weekend prior, or well, ending on the day before Father's Day, actually, uh, we, we came back on Saturday uh, for about three days. We were up in the mountains camping, and man, uh, it was good. It's always good to go camping. It's always yeah. just, it's nice to just get away and relax. <clears throat> Not have to worry about all the crap. Yeah, I, uh, I spent Father's Day with, uh, with my youngest at the indoor playground, watching her play around while I sat on my phone and researched random stuff <laughs> Sounds good to me yeah it, it wasn't bad it was like a bunch of his dads like we'd all take turns you know um it'd be a bunch of us sitting around the edges and all the kids would be playing on the playground in the middle and then one dad would like go sit down and another dad would get up and they'd go play with the kids for a little bit and then they'd go sit down and another one would get up so it worked out it was, it was, it was like a little community uh event nice so not too bad <clears throat> but well, uh so you, you went on a um, thousands of miles long trek. Oh my God! Yes, four thousand some odd miles. Like it was, it was insane. From from Abilene, Texas, up to Anchorage, Alaska. And I tell you what, it was a trip that I'm very, very glad we did. I do not want to do it again <laughs> at all. Uh, you, you flew, right? Oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh. The bus, the bus. You took the bus. No, no, no. That wouldn't be. That would not have been comfortable. No. Wait, what? No. Wait, what? What? Wait. How did you get? You didn't walk. Well, no, no. But uh, people have ridden their bicycles from Austin up to Anchorage. Is on, that what you did? Uh, did you? 80, ride no, oh no, no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 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 I don't have the knees for that anymore. No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> we won't get into the reasons why. <laughs> oh, look at you being sassy. <laughs> no, I drove. Uh, drove my power wagon. Um, it was it was quite the adventure. I had a had my travel trailer strapped up behind it, and we hit the road and we took off. And uh, wow, what a drive! So the first day we went to Colorado Springs, Colorado, to visit uh, some of my wife's friends from back in high school and stuff. And that day was supposed to be the longest driving day of twelve hours. Mm. It was not. <laughs> it was twelve hours, but it was not nearly the longest driving day. So towards the end of the trip, we had a, a blown out tire. We had 40 miles of dirt road that were, that was graded. So it was basically a washboard for about 40 miles. Um, and at the end of it, we were just like, you know what? We're just going, we're just finishing this trip. We're done with the whole sightseeing. All the mountains are starting to look the same. We've seen bear and moose and, 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 uh, uh, rams and, uh, uh, whatever the hell else we saw caribou sure um i think I, I think actually caribou is the one thing we didn't see we saw elk but oh. not caribou i'm not even sure what the difference is between the two but apparently that's what we saw <clears throat> um we saw bison which was cool you know being the, the, from benton central high school you know that was cool actually seeing a herd of bison on the side of the road just chilling um but yeah we eventually just got got done with the trip we're just done we're just you know screw it we're done and that ended up turning into a 20 hour driving day. Ooh, ooh, and ooh. a lot of that was just, there's was, there was nothing but mountains on either side. There's really no scenery. 
And coming into Alaska, like as soon as you cross the Canada border into Alaska, there's nothing but marsh on either side of you for about two hours. And oh, wow. It's, it, it, I mean, it's not Alaska's fault. It's not like Alaska's like, fuck it, we're just going to piss on the border right here and just create a marsh. But it was just it's one of those, uh, you, you were finally in the state we're supposed to be in. We're back into using American dollars, not Canadian dollars. And everybody's talking about, about things, not about them. <laughs> and you know we we ran into assholes again which i mean it's it's amazing how nice canadians are like it's ridiculous how kind and like it's creepy um yeah. and we finally got into alaska and we're just like oh this is what, we're, what we came to look at <laughs> this is dumb like, oh damn this is not cool uh it eventually prettied up i mean we saw a couple glaciers on the way here we saw a lot of rivers um Man, really, really pretty country once you get past that first couple hours of Alaska. But holy crap, it was <laughs> not the best. And, the, well, the last, probably the last hour of, of Canada was the same marshy bullshit. You know, it, it's not like the water, the, the, there would be a creek. And the creek would be like six feet wide. But the watershed of that creek would be a half a mile wide. So during the thaw, the whole half mile was just a creek or a river running down. But once the thaw was over, it was just that little bit and all that leftover water and marshy shit on the sides. Ah, so, I see. Okay. <laughs> it was like, this is like like half frozen Louisiana. What the hell is this shit? Um, God, right? Probably <laughs> minus the gators, I would imagine. I didn't I didn't check them out. I saw telephone poles were leaning over. The, the Like the ground couldn't hold them up anymore. I was like, I'm oh, not geez. stopping here. I'm going. And uh, so that was that wasn't bad. Um, it was m- me, the wife, and the youngest, and uh, we had a we had a good time. We stopped and did some hot springs, and we stayed the night at a couple hotels and stuff. And we met this one couple that was what the well now Skype just ate it. Um, yeah. So I've got audio back. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So um, <clears throat> we met this one couple that in Alberta, like right after we crossed the border, we met them at a McDonald's. Hmm. And they were with us all the way to Whitehorse, which is the majority of the trip through Canada. And they knew they they did the trek like often. So they knew all the little spots to check out and which gas stations to hit and which towns not to buy gas in and everything else. And and they were they were awesome. And uh it was really just like that. Like everywhere in Alaska, all the, all, or everywhere in Canada, all the Canadians were really, really cool and really helpful and everything. And then you get back to, back into America and you're just like, as soon as you cross the border, it's like, Oh, the assholery begins. Sweet. Oh God. That's like <laughs> the first time I flew back to the States from Japan. We yeah. got the plane in Detroit and, and it, <laughs> it was like, welcome to motherfucking America. You fucking piece of shit get the fuck off the goddamn plane yes like oh, oh fuck. yeah it's so, so odd. by the 90 percent japanese well okinawans um getting off the plane with me i was embarrassed for my country when mm-hmm. that happened mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it's just it's, it's complete culture shock like it, it just it's completely odd so that's um that was my trip that's how it's gone and since we've been here i mean we uh we, we found a house so it looks like we're going to be moving in on uh, on August 1st. Right and on. That's exciting to me because I've never actually owned a house. This would be my first house and it's not a fixer upper. So I'm not like going into it determined to fix all the things that are wrong with it. It's like, okay, we need to do a little bit of, you know, a couple of patchworks here and a little bit of there. And, and, you know, we're getting new carpet put in and, and uh, that's going to be awesome. We're going to have a little man cave downstairs. So I actually have a real studio and have a set up and, and me and the, and me and my son can, really just you know hang out and and do the man thing down there since we have nothing else but women in the house (laughs) and uh um yeah really looking forward to it really excited so there's there's uh there's there's my trip to alaska thus far i have not gone to work i've not had my first official day of work yet (laughs) at least then some in processing type Um, stuff just the minimum stuff i did the minimum to get on my house hunting leave and then yeah that was it Oh, okay. So my first official day of work to, is either tomorrow or Monday. I haven't gotten the phone call to tell me, so <laughs> I'm, you know, okay. it's oh, whatever. But yeah, man, um, that's that's been uh, that's been my last couple of weeks. But before I went on leave, well, be, on the on the trip up, I was having problems with my iTunes password. 
Okay. You, you see, I've had the same old password on my iTunes account forever. Mm-hmm. And it's the old one. It's the one that didn't require you to have a uh, capital letter and all that other stuff. It's basically just letters and numbers. You're good. So it was like, okay, brrr, fine. Then they changed the pos- policy about two years ago that you had to have capital letters, small letters, numbers, and, you know, whatever. But I, yeah. I avoided making that change until it forced me to when I logged into my iCloud account. And since I did that, but about a month ago, none of my iCloud stuff is resynced. Oh, shit. So it's like I just logged onto my MacBook Air earlier, and it gave me a bunch of warnings about how Face FaceTime wasn't working. So I had to re-log into that five times. Like, that's this is something that should be easier to do. Because, you know, I have all these devices that all have the same account login and password on it. Uh-huh. Fix the shit. Change it once. It happens everywhere. Yep, yep. But, but that's not the case. So that, that's been a total pain in my ass. Yeah. So uh, I, think, I think Google is much better with that. It's hard for me to say. I don't own any Google devices. Stephanie does. Mm-hmm. Like she's got a she's got a Samsung phone. Uh, so no, you know it's not Google brand, but it runs the Google uh, phone i uh, phone OS Android. Uh, Android. Um, and she's got a um, she's got a tablet. She's got a Google tablet. I don't I don't remember the brand. Um, but yeah, like it seems like when she changes a password or something like that, it just propagates to all the things. Just like when you lo- log into Google, like to, into Drive or email or whatever, YouTube, everything just kind of just works. Yep. Which is totally an Apple move, but Apple is failing at their own game, it seems like. So, so here's another thing. Uh, to, speaking of Apple failing, like this is one of the things, I don't even understand why it happened the way it did, but it did. <clears throat> I go in and my wife and I are both having a problem with our, with our iPhone six pluses mm. where sometimes it'd have erratic screen behavior and sometimes it just wouldn't respond. You had to turn it off, turn it back on, whatever. So we went in there and we're, we're thinking, okay, we'll probably reseat the screen, whatever. Well, now it's a whole repair thing and blah, 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 blah. So we could either replace the phones for $300 or upgrade the phones for $400 or whatever it ended up being. Mm. Well, okay. So, Give us the upgrade, right? Like, if I'm going to pay that much money towards it anyway, give me the damn upgrade. Right. So we got iPhone 6S Pluses. Cool. Great phone. And you're right. That 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 touch sensor where you, where you, unplug, or you uh, unlock it with your finger, way too fast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> too re- fast. Ridiculously oh, fast. Um, now, here's the kicker, though. We resynced our watches to it. And my wife's phone wouldn't sync to the watch. We had to take it back to the store to sync up to the watch. Apparently, it had to be on Wi-Fi. It wouldn't, it wouldn't sync on the hotel Wi-Fi. Okay, fine. That's, that's understandable. Hotel Wi-Fi typically sucks. My watch synced up just fine, but only went to like 30% brightness. It's max brightness setting. Like you put it on max brightness, and it was still only about 30% as bright as it should have been. Completely unreadable during the day. What the hell? Reset both the phone and the watch. Watch never came back. Had to send the watch in. They, I mean, they, they shipped me a brand new one, you know. So that was cool. But yeah, to, so just completely ridiculous on that one. Don't know what happened. This new watch has been working fine with the phone. The phone's working great. I don't know. It's one of those anom- anomalies, man. I don't know what the hell happened. Damn, damn gremlins. It's it's been that kind of trip. Like we blew out a tire on the trailer um, about two thirds of the way up here. Didn't know it for probably hundred miles because we're towing the trailer. <coughs> yeah, hmm. yeah, good times. <laughs> so speaking of, speaking of gremlins, what what who do you think would win in a fight, a gremlin or a troll? Gremlin or a troll? Yeah. Now is this pre water or not pre water but pre midnight feeding? Oh no 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 no! It's uh, not a mogwai, a gremlin. Hmm. Versus say say a um, like a, a your typical D and D style troll. Um, I would go with the troll just because of the regenerative powers. Right. Well, what if the um, what if the gremlin had a rocket launcher and a shrink ray? Now who would win? Okay, now you're getting a little, a little bit closer, but I'm still going to go with the regenerative powers. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, because you'd have to hit the rocket launcher. You had to. It, it had to hit close enough to cause massive burns to stop <laughs> the uh, the regeneration. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You know, so, and the shrink ever, like, the shrink rate would actually only make it harder to hit the troll after you shrunk it down. True enough, true enough. So, have you ever heard of the card game Super Fight? Uh, you mentioned it. Did I mention it to you? You, you mentioned it uh, maybe uh, maybe six months a year ago, something like that. Something you and Lucas had had discovered and and had toyed oh, with. Yeah, so we finally acquired it. Hmm. Holy shit, is this game fun? <laughs> <laughs> It, so it's it's scenarios like what I just presented you with. Mm-hmm. So you, to I mean it can be you know fantasy creatures. It could be Batman. It could be Donald Trump. I mean it could be just you think it up. There's probably a card for it. Mm-hmm. So basically what you do, you go against somebody. You choose your hero. Well you don't choose. You draw your hero, and then you draw two attributes. Okay. So it could be something like you know has a rocket launcher. Or it could be a herd of kittens. Or it could be something that's just a straight-up handicap. Like, um, instead of a leg, you have a ice cream cone. Or, you know, okay. something completely ridiculous. So it's, it's basically random. Well, you, you draw random cards, and then you, like, you choose, like, three of the five cards to keep, basically. It's, it's kind of how it works. And so you go head-to-head, and you argue about who... Who would win the fight? So it's a battle of wits with with predetermined it, modifiers. Right, right, right. Basically, so so you argue. You've played the contender, right? Mm. So the the idea of the debate, the you know, basically screaming at each other at the end to make your point, is kind of what this becomes, because you present your arguments about why your guy will win, but then you just it kind of breaks out breaks down into this like. Uh, no, are you kidding me? He's going to fly up and throw this thing down. And then, so the rest of the people, the, the, you know, the, the other players in the game vote on who won the fight. Gotcha. So, yeah, it's, oh, my God, dude. It is so much fun. I'm guessing this game is almost almost has the prerequisite of, of two beers. Um, Not necessarily. The boys enjoy it. Sober, even. Well, <laughs> I was going to oh, say, you, you're not saying much. <laughs> oh, no, but it's, it's, it's an all-ages game. Hmm. Uh, basic game is basically a family-style um, game with not a whole lot of geekery with it. But they have expansion packs. And, like, one pack is, like, a, a younger kid-style game. So it'll be, like... You know, uh, you know, kittens against bunnies or some crap. So, I don't know. So I didn't buy that can, pack. You can tailor the experience towards more the age group and the mindset of the people that you have. Playing. Exactly. They've they've even got a um, an anime version. They've got um, or I say version. It's an expansion pack. You add it to your deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 we we bought the the geeky one. I don't remember the name of it. I think it's called the I think it's the orange deck, but it's basically like the geeky one where where it's got like Gandalf and Batman and stuff like that. Gotcha. Uh, then there's the red deck, which is the deck that kind of makes it more like Cards Against Humanity. The, uh, gotcha. The the adult themed deck. Yes. The the one that you don't play with the kids. The, the, the NSFW. <laughs> yes. Yes. So good stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so uh, <clears throat> in all these travels and with you playing the game and everything else, there's something else that we just haven't had a chance to talk about. And I want to mention it here. Because, um, so I want to mention it because I want to, I want people to guess to see what it actually is. Okay. I am starting a top secret project with another member of Diamond Club, Mm -hmm. a, a fairly prominent member of Diamond Club. And none of this has been finalized yet, but it's all in the works. It's all in the wings. And is getting ready to start probably as soon as I as soon as I move into this house and have a dedicated internet connection that I'm not working on Wi-Fi with. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would like people, anybody that that, that can, that, that listens to this show, to go ahead and imagine what other Diamond Clubber I would do a show with, and what that show would be about, right off the cuff. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll do this with uh, over Twitter. With hashtag RMP secret. 
RMP secret. Yep. Okay. RMP secret. Hashtag RMP secret. And uh, we'll we'll see what people come up with. Um, it's 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 a very prominent diamond clubber, and it's a very specific topic show. So. Um, that's all I'm going to give out now. Once we start getting a little bit of feedback on it, I'll kind of, kind of tailor it in. And of course, once we have uh, have some some stuff recorded and are ready to release, I'll go ahead and announce what it is. Right on. I'm looking forward to seeing what this is because when you said that that you've got this project with the Diamond Club, I was like, oh, is it me? Is it me? And then you said prominent. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> not me. Uh, <laughs> no, no, definitely not with you. Uh, that that is that is another clue. It's not with you. Um, oh, it's actually okay. it's actually with someone who's been in Diamond Club much longer than you. Oh shit! Okay, being, being that you're about a about, almost about a two year Diamond Clubber at this point. Yeah, that's that's probably pretty close. Given or taken, yeah, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Ooh man, I'm getting so. some serious thunder. <laughs> it sounds awesome. It might well, be why I, Skype dude, hasn't come back earlier, yet. Earlier, like an hour hour and a half ago, something like that. That that I think I'm in the eye of the storm because. Mm-hmm. Completely surrounded by this thunderstorm, just these you know rolling clouds and lightning and all this crap, but nothing is happening directly above me, so I'm not getting any rain or anything, and it's been this way for like two hours. Mm. So mm. I don't know, maybe it's some sort of magical event or something like some sort of cataclysmic <laughs> nothing storm or something. I don't know. <laughs> you start seeing asteroids fall from the sky, run. Right. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Leave the holy city. <laughs> hey, did, did you want to take a short break? Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a short break. Get your uh, get your Skype reset real quick, and uh, see if we can get this thing to f- flow the way it's supposed to. All right, all right, guys. See you in just a few minutes. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump back into this thing. I forgot what my little hotkey was to to do the transfer. <laughs> I think it's G. It's not G. You just click the button, like click the little clicky thing. I, I yeah, but I actually knew the button and it made it so much easier. Okay, we're back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, man. Um, so. We have some old business to handle. Some TED Talks from weeks ago. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so I believe this is the point, if I remember this show correctly, that I should be hitting this button right here. All right, man. Um, James Belog, time-lapse proof of extreme ice loss. Now, I watched this preparing to come to Alaska. And I got to tell you, this is an easy one. Just go watch it. It's ridiculous how much ice is going away on these glaciers. These massive glaciers are just disappearing at at, at amazing rates. I'm not trying to say it's global warming or any of the other stuff. I just want to tell you that it's something that you wouldn't normally notice because it happens so slowly. But when you take it over time, over years and over months, and watch this stuff happen. It's amazing how much ice is just disappearing out of these ice flows. Yeah, yeah, I've seen time lapse stuff like that before of of glaciers and and uh, things. And uh, holy crap, man! Um, you know, call it what you want: climate change, global warming, whatever. Like something is definitely happening. Something is changing on this planet, and it's just obvious. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, if it, if it's something that interests you at all, as far as like uh, climate change and how the world moves and and uh, just the big picture things, just go watch it. It's really cool. And if I remember correctly, it's not a very long one either. It's not a full eighteen minutes of just pictures. <laughs> right, it, it right. Goes into, it goes into like how they did it and stuff like that, and it's pretty interesting. So, um, how about uh, Shivani? Sur- sur- uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, so, so I, pra- I practice sur- this. Oh, yeah. I practiced this a couple of times before the show, and I never actually got it right. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Shiv- yeah. Shivani Saroya. Well, I, you know, I, I think I'm 
Yeah, you're probably pretty close. But you know what I think I'm going to do from now on? Because it's a thing every fucking time we do TED Talks, I think I'm purposely going to seek out the, the ones. ridiculously spelled name that I can find for a TED speaker. And that's how I'm going to choose my talks from now on. Fair enough. Uh, Sounds good. So Sh- Shivani, her talk was called A Smart Loan for People with No Credit History Yet. This was very interesting to me. I'm I'm interested in personal finance, um, you know, credit scores, things like that. It interests me. And so this one kind of st- stood out to me uh, several weeks back when I actually watched this. I had, to, I had to review the notes of the show to remember even what it was about. Uh, but no, this was, this was very interesting. Uh, we here in the States and in most first world nations, the way that you get a loan or a credit card or buy a car or anything like that, it, it's based on your credit score. Uh, not only can you get the loan, but but what is your your APR going to be? What is your your um, uh, your percentage? Essentially, the worse history or worse credit you have, the more they're going to charge you for the money they loan you. Right, and that's yeah, that leads into a, a conversation for another time because I've got this whole rant about. Uh, about all that, but but anyhow, so what what happens if you don't have a credit score? Let's say you're a 30 year old man, and you don't have a credit score. Right. Kind of you, you know, maybe you're a late bloomer. You've been in mom's <laughs> basement or whatever. Okay, first of but, all, if you're 30 years old and you don't have, you haven't established any credit, good or bad yet. Congratulations. Go out and get a Kit Kat. Because how <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> Right, but let's say you know you were you were stuck in mom's basement until you're 30, and finally mom's like, "Okay, this it, that's it, it's the final straw. Get the fuck out of the basement. Go get a job." Because she's Go on a new talk. boyfriend. Yeah. So what you know? What do you do? Uh, there's not a whole lot of options here here in this country. Uh, okay, so so real quick, right now my family is here in the hotel room with me. We had a kind of a long day, so they didn't go swimming like they were planning on. And uh, they're trying to sneak around in here without being noticed and without being on camera, without blocking out the light that is sitting in front of me. And oh. it is like I thought I thought my wife would be irritated with the little maids that I have out here. But instead, she just ducks down and like crawls like low crawls across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> across the That's entire, amazing. The entire living room to get to, to the stuff that she's going for. <laughs> At some point in the show, she's she needs to pop up and just wave, or or better yet, do the Mortal Kombat thing, the dusty. Uh, yeah, no, no, she she'll uh, she I might be able to get her on camera one day, like after she gets her 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 hair did and stuff. But well, but she's already met half of Diamond Club. I think she she yes, even though she's already met half of Diamond Club at the South by Southwest, there's no way because then it becomes a permanent record, and she's she's still hopeful that everybody but her loses pictures from that event. So. <laughs> Even though they're all over social media, all over they are, they are. It's it's whatever. So <laughs> That's in, in, anyway, anyway, credit scores for thirty year olds living in their mom's basement go. <laughs> yeah, so in in this country, there's not a whole lot of options. Uh, the the best thing to do probably would be to to go to a bank and get one of the uh, like prepaid credit cards uh, where you can basically finance yourself. Where mm. you give them three hundred dollars and you have like a prepaid credit card, right? And that basically establishes, um, you know, like responsible spending and and uh, stuff like that. And that that's a start. Um, but in countries that don't have a bank that you can just walk into and ask for money, or just readily open up a savings account or anything like that, um, it's it's a hell of a lot more difficult. Okay. Uh, so this company, uh, I don't know the name of the company because she doesn't mention it in the TED Talk, uh, but she has a startup where her and her associates, they, they made this app. It's a mobile phone app. Holy cow, that's getting loud. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but wow. <laughs> I thought it was me for a second. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> um, so so they, they made this app, and it's tied into their servers and it allows them to basically monitor whoever is using the app and so basically how it works the app tracks everything that you do on the phone um who you talk to it like it doesn't it doesn't like track like your um uh you know it doesn't record your calls it doesn't uh show a like a 
know, your text messages or anything like that, but it will show who you are talking to and how often it'll track your movements. Um, you know, so like where you go. So, so is this credit by social media then? Uh, not social media because it's a, it's a one way private connection. The app only communicates with the company's server. Um, so, uh, you know, spending habits, all this sort of stuff, just like your lifestyle is what it's tracking. Okay. How you live your day to day life. And based on some complex algorithm, the company that, that she created will make a determination. Basically, in a sense, give a credit score to the user of the app and judge their credit worthiness. Like uh, a lot of people in um, you know, developing nations will want to uh, you know, start a business. Okay. Like, there's a lot of like street vendors that would like to have an actual store to sell things out of, you know, improve their life up by a great deal. But, you know, they make enough money to feed their families and replenish their stocks to sell again, but they don't have discretionary spending money. The only way to, to improve your life and increase your profits is to get a loan. And then you can start making more money and you can repay, repay the loan, et cetera. Right. Um, so with this app, it allows people to, to get a credit score where they wouldn't normally be able to. And they've got several, she talks about several, um, I don't want to say case studies, but um, um, examples, we'll say that, uh, several examples of where um, people have improved their lives because of this. Uh, you know, just giving like a $5,000 loan or not even like a $2,000 loan can drastically increase the, uh, the status quo, the, um, um, your standard of living for some of these people and really turn their life around. Just that little bump to get them over this, this uh, barrier can open the doors for them just all the way down, down the line. Right. Um, so that, that's what this app is doing. And I'm really glad that she didn't name, mention the name of her company so, because it would sound too much like an advertisement at that point. Mm -hmm. But just the, the idea of this, the, the um, you know, we talk a lot about crowdfunding and um, uh, crowdsourcing and things like that on this show, like Kickstarter and GoFundMe and things like that. Um, this is another example of uh, using technology, using um, not necessarily social media, but, but uh, the same technologies used in, in social media for, um, do you have jets taking off? No. <laughs> there's, there's some sort of, uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, no, I just, I just thought it was a, a really great idea that, that can help people all over the planet and give them opportunities that they wouldn't have. So if you're interested in finance or just like helping people, this is, this is an interesting talk to, to listen to. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't know what's so. This is a are still in beta moment for the night. <laughs> you, you, you thought the uh, you, you thought the the Skype hiccup was the still in beta moment. No, <laughs> um, uh, no. I just I turned my mic off completely and the sound was still coming through. So I don't know if like you have some really strange static going on where you are. But it's wow. That was that was very interesting. Is, 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 Don't maybe, sound maybe. like a jet taking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'm 20 something <laughs> miles from base, so it, it wasn't on my end. Um, that was insane. All right, cool. Um, so I, I, apparently, you would you would recommend watching this uh, this TED talk and kind of getting a grasp on exactly what's going on with uh, with this little company that's trying to help people get loans and, or get uh, build up credit and things. So um, it actually sounds pretty cool. I think it's one of those cases where it's far more interesting to watch it than to hear you talk about it. Because wow. No, absolutely no, no, absolutely. <laughs> and um, and that's another thing too. Shivani is a she's really well spoken, and she's actually not too bad to look at either. So, oh, there uh, you go. Go check it out. She's way way more interesting to to listen to than me. Oh well, uh, yeah. Well, there's that. So um, so we're still running a little thing, man. We're still still helping people get the the you know I've got a man cave coming as soon as we get our house, and and I'm gonna need to stock it up, man. So I you know we're. we're I got to look at like places that I can go that are going to specialize in, in geek shit that I can put up and that I can buy and maybe even get like a little bit of a discount on. So why don't you tell me about that real quick? Dude. I, yeah, I was going to say, I got the perfect place, man. Yeah. 
yeah, it's called geekandgamergear.com. Yeah. It's 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 like a um is is it's not I wouldn't call it a mega store, but it's like a a a really cool online store for uh, you, you know, like a Hastings or, or a store like that where you walk in, it's just like full of all these geek toys and stuff mm-hmm. like that. This is like an online version of that. As long as you're outside of Ebeling, yeah. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, go to geekandgamergear.com. That's geek and then the letter N, mm-hmm. geekandgamergear.com. There's all kinds of, of geeky toys. and Apparently t-shirts. apparently they charge per letter when they're doing URLs, so they couldn't get the A and D. It's just geek. <laughs> The letter N, gamer, gear, dot com. Yep. All kinds of cool shit on there, man. And if you want to save a little bit of money on the already low prices, enter Ritual Misery at checkout, and you'll get another, like, uh, let's say 10%. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a 10% discount if 10%. you enter Ritual Misery Hell yeah. at checkout. That's, that, that's good stuff. I like that. 10%. Yep. So, um, so other than that, man, speaking of, of geeks and gamers and shit, I got to tell you, there was some huge news just in the last couple of weeks. I'm just getting caught up on everything going on. E3, WWDC, big announcements. What the hell? <clears throat> I shot you a video that was the WWDC announcements cut down to 10 minutes. Fantastic video. An amazing, amazing show. Those 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, lots of cool stuff. Are you up to speed on the on the the E three at all? Um, I'll take that as a no. I, only peripherally, <laughs> put it so no. I new I Xbox is coming out. They announced them years ahead of time. The Xbox uh, Xbox One S is going to be the small, the slim version. Um, no external power brick. It's, it's all going to be internal. Finally, Microsoft figured that one out. Uh, it's going to be just basically an Xbox One in a smaller form factor, less power usage. And I believe the same about the same stats. I don't think they're doing any major hardware changes for that one. Then they got the Xbox One Scorpio. Scorpio, there you go. It's not coming out until like the end of next year, which makes it completely useless in my mind in <laughs> every way, shape, or form. Um, if you were listening to the tech blogs, especially DTNS, Sony came out on Sunday and said, yeah, this is what's going on. This is what we're going to do. It was kind of like give a little bit of hint at the 4K thing, you know, uh, acknowledged, or maybe it was Friday before E3, acknowledged that Project Neo is real. And then Microsoft comes out and it kind of, I don't want to say it forced their hand, but it seemed to. It forced their hand into announcing the Scorpio so people knew that it was coming and everything else. And then Sony comes along later on in the evening and just plays two hours of, of uh, video game videos. Doesn't annou- <laughs> doesn't uh, other than uh, annou- or announcing a release date for the PSVR, which was already announced, but the the release date wasn't as was October eighteenth, I think. They said, yeah, it's going to be available for for purchase on October eighteenth. Go with the videos, and they just showed videos for the next like two hours, and completely just a, a totally different aspect. Especially for you know E3, which is typically for marketing and for devel- developers and stuff, to just go and say fuck it, we're just gonna play games and let the people see what we're working on. Totally out of left field. Awesome. If you've seen any of the videos, <laughs> I couldn't even begin to tell you what games all were there. Gameplay videos, uh, cinemagraphics, um, just amazing. Just just good stuff from coming in from Sony. And then uh, of course Nintendo came out with uh, with. Pokemon and uh, Legend of Zelda. I don't get Pokemon. I've, I've never really been into it. I understand the concept of it. Not really all that interested. Zelda, like, they're bringing it back to the Zelda that I want to play. You know, it's got a little bit of the old school feel. It's got some, some art, art, uh, artsy-fartsy shit involved in it with the graphic style and everything else. Open world, well, open, open-ish world and... Uh, yeah, really, really excited. Really looking forward to it. I don't think Link was wearing a green tunic though in in the footage that I saw. <laughs> so that shit. That, that's only the beginner, man. Like it, all of his beginner tunics are green, man. They were just showing some advanced shit. <laughs> they don't. They don't want to give away the beginning of the game. They want to. They want to give away a little bit of the middle, like in like movie th- movie trailers, you know. Yeah. No, the the game looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to playing that. I'm old school Zelda gamer. And yep. In fact, I think 
back in high school, didn't we, you and I, get into a fist fight or almost get into a fist fight over a link to the past? My my favorite console game of all time, um, <laughs> because I clearly know how to get to the first dungeon in the dark world better than you do, and uh, <laughs> that that's uh that, that was the thing that that that's what happened there. Yep, we fought. So, um. <laughs> and, 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 and then and then we smoked, and that's how that's how high school was. That's what high school was. That's that's how that worked. So, <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Uh, I, I'm really excited about it. I've got to say, I'm just as excited about some of the stuff coming from Apple as I was from E3. And I'm not going to go all fanboy here, but I think some of the really important things, the one that struck me as the the most, I don't want to say innovative, because it really isn't an innovation. It's it's kind of a new idea, but it seems like something that should have been there all along. Um, watch OS 3. It's kind of like Apple taking a step back, realizing that their first interface wasn't quite right and redesigning the entire thing. Apps are going to fire up instantly, well, as instantly as possible. It's not going to lag. It's not going to have to refresh after you open the app. And one of the, the, the thing that got me the, the hardest, <clears throat> this little button on the side over here, you have, the, you have the digital crown, which you know scrolls, and then you have the little button right over here. If you hit the button and hold it down, it starts a uh, countdown timer. After three seconds, it calls 911. It calls 911 equivalent to whatever country you're in. So in Japan, it's like 119 or whatever. You know, in, uh, in Korea, it was 191 or 112 or something. It knows where you are, calls that appropriate number, and then after the call hangs up, it sends a pic or sends a uh, the, your location to your list of emergency contacts, and then will show your your medical ID whether you got you know diabetes, or you got cancer this or whatever. It'll show that on on the watch. So when medical personnel arrive, your medical ID is right there on your wrist. Mm. Why 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 wasn't this always there? You know what I mean? This is like something that, that tells me is like this is this is life alert. This is a new high tech, better version of life alert, free once you buy the watch. Right. You know? And and so the watch works over Wi Fi if the phone and the watch have been on the same Wi Fi network. So once you once you oper once you use your watch on a Wi Fi network, you don't have to have the phone with you. The watch will update according to that Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Regardless of that, if you're on Wi-Fi on the watch, you don't have to have the phone with you, and the 911 function will work. That's yeah. That is um, yeah. That's that's things like that is is what needs to be there. That's that's the future tech that we need. Right. This is. I mean, it, I don't want to say that this is going to give you a reason to buy the watch for your grandma or whatever, but having it there. Like if, if I have some condition, like I'm, I'm, I have, I have a drug allergy that isn't life threatening, but makes my life completely miserable. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like absolutely miserable. It might as well be life threatening because I'd rather kill myself than suffer it. Having that on my watch, if I ever get hurt, because it's one of the, it's a, it's one of those drugs that they would normally give you for certain, certain things. You just, let's, oh, here you go. Putting that mm -hmm. on my watch, where if I am ever actually in, you know, injured or, or deca de de decapitated, uh, <laughs> yeah, in, in, incapacitated, that I mean that's pretty important, you know. Um, I like that. I think that's really cool. A lot of the other stuff was was going on there. They changed the name of, of OS 10 to Mac OS, which was just duh. Why why didn't you do that five years ago? They're changing some of the, other, the some of the way that Mac OS works in the background. They're they're uh, they're adding a bunch of features to to iOS and it all seems pretty um, uh, 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 it seems like the next logical progression in the steps of building a, a common interface in, in a unified structure and everything else it seems like they're just it's just step by step yeah with a couple standouts the 911 deal being being one of them yeah and that's like when the wall Watch first came out. I said, you know, I'm not going to be there for the first, probably the second, and probably not even the third. But it, if you know, once it gets out there and they test it and they see what works, what doesn't, 
and figure out really, really cool ways to make this thing just fucking awesome, I might be there. And yeah, it's getting closer to something that I'm going to be interested in. Mm -hmm. Not quite there yet for me because, you know, I'm not a watch guy. I'm not a jewelry guy. Um, but it's getting closer. It's becoming uh, much more compelling. So I got to tell you, um, you, you have the iPhone 6S, right? Yes. How often do you use the 3D touch on it? Fairly often. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I didn't for probably the first six months or more. Like, I just, what the fuck is it? Like, no. And when I did use it, it was on accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, which a lot of times, I, a lot of times it's on accident now, to be honest. I'll just be pushing something thinking that I'm just doing long touch mm -hmm. or long press, but I'm actually doing the 3D touch or 3D, right. whatever the 3D touch. Is that what they call it? Sure. Yeah. The, the So like the, the hard <laughs> press. And um, it's actually pretty nice because it'll bring up a menu. It's like right clicking an icon. Exactly. I, I Since I got this phone, I've already adopted it right into the right click. In my mind, that's what it is. It's the touch version of the right click. You have the long press, which gives you certain functionality, which we've been using for years. Okay, fine. But actually doing the force touch or the 3D touch or whichever, whatever they're calling it now, right. it's, and again, this is not an innovation. It seems to me like something like this should have been there the whole time. Right, right, right. You know, and it's, it's, it's awesome. I, people, uh, people have been saying that nobody uses it. Why are they, you know, why are they adding features to it? This and that. I use it all the time. Like I constantly use it. I, I tweet that way. I message that way. I respond to things that way. Like it's, it's just, it's such a natural thing for me already. And I've only had the phone for two weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, it took me a, a lot longer. I didn't understand it. And yeah. then, um, you know, like I said, I, I started doing it by accident and that's kind of what showed me like, Oh, Oh, this is something that it does. Oh, mm -hmm. neat. And yeah, it's just, you know, more and more. No, I, I have had a slightly different, um, experience with it in that, uh, with the watch, it already had that feature. So that's already kind of how you right click on the uh, watch. Right. So okay. going from that into the phone, I probably had more of a progression with it than most people might, but it still seems to me like just something that's natural. That's just like, yes, that's, that's what you do. You, you yep. press just a little bit harder and bloop, bloop, now there's a menu, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, is there anything else about, uh, either E3 or, uh, WWDC that, that struck your fancy? Um, no, in fact, the, the, the biggest thing that, that I thought about with WWDC was thanks to our good friend Richard Gunther, uh, the home kit stuff. Yes. It's, that's pretty neat. Um, nothing, a whole lot new really coming from that, just that um, Apple's paying more attention to it. And yeah, it, it's becoming a little bit more prominent. They're kind of integrating it a little bit more and wrapping their services up into one neat package instead of a couple different packages. Yeah, and the main thing with this is that, you know, it's all about smart home technology, mm -hmm. uh, the connected home, stuff like that, Internet of Things, all that, um, which is so awesome and so compelling to me, like the whole, the whole Jetsons future thing. I'm all about that shit. The reason that I, I'm not really in it right now is because it's too chaotic and too just here and there and just, you know, yeah. it's too, it, there's, there's too much that doesn't do enough, I guess. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that damn sound is coming back in. Hope, hopefully that's not uh, feeding too much into covering up our voices. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say one thing about that, the whole home thing, because you, you mentioned it, and that actually did strike up my in attention. Now, a <clears throat> little shameless plug here for our good friend Richard Gunther. He has a podcast called Home On. H-O-M-E colon space on and the, that's all he, that's what he talks about he he goes he's at, he actually goes to conferences that have these internet of things and these automated homes and and things like that and then makes this podcast about it and they talk about all the different you know him and whatever co-host he has that you know at that time um they talk about these different uh systems and different uh uh, uh capabilities that are coming up and coming through and you are a homeowner I am about to be a homeowner, and as I mentioned to him, I see some uh, some 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 short 
form uh, either episodes or add-ons or whatever else because I plan on automating this house to the degree that my wife will let me. Awesome. And uh, yeah. as as I as Actar called it, it's the the oh damn it the the par the the partner approval rating. Uh, right. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm 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 all for it. There's a, I already have a couple a couple ideas and things that I want to do. I'm gonna set up a home server for all of our movies. I'm gonna take all of, all of them off of DVD and Blu-ray, and put them on a common server so you can access them from anywhere in the house uh, using either Plex or um, XBMC, which is now what Coda. And uh, I'm gonna get that going. I'm gonna make make that happen using uh, different different interfaces. Even you know we we got a Samsung TV that'll do it all its own. We have Chromecast. We have Apple TV. You know, all these different things. I want to have all of this going. I want to make sure that it's all a seamless thing. I want to see what the differences are in them. And if there's a reason to, you know, ditch my Chromecast for more Apple TV or vice versa, you know, whichever, however that works. I want to know all that. And I want to have it set up to where everybody can watch whatever they want in, at whatever TV they want. Because we're not getting cable. Because fuck cable. Yeah. Yep. I'm so, so dumb. All right. Um, is there anything else, man? Like, we, we've, uh, we've, we've actually gone about an hour and 10 minutes which it's it's pretty you know well recording time i guess is right right under an hour so we're, we're doing pretty good no i've got i got one more thing man okay big 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 star wars news the last couple of days oh i missed it apparently what's up uh it's been confirmed now that darth vader is going to be in rogue one i did see that via twitter yeah what kind of impl- uh you know what, what, what do you think that instills in it i mean what what's the uh the depth of of that storytelling going on well yeah he's not going to be a main character he's not going to be the main villain or anything like that i think the way that they're going to portray him is kind of the the feared enforcer okay so a group of rebels are over here fucking with the empire and killing stormtroopers left and right Darth Vader's going to appear on the scene and people are going to shit their pants and get chopped up by the lightsaber and turn will just instill more fear and more fear and more fear. Basically showing, showing him building his reputation of being this unstoppable badass force, uh, okay. so to speak. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to go uh, counter to that. Okay. This is what I think. I think he's going to have essentially a cameo right at the end of the movie and he's only going to have like one or two lines they're going to feed into what happens in a new hope all right and uh So apparently that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, Falkenden says uh, rage quit. That's exactly what Kent just did right there. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see if you can call back again. Yes, exactly, Strings, exactly. No lines. He's not going to have any lines at all, or he'll have just one or two lines. It'll be something very, very, very simple. All right, there we go. And we're back. So I was uh, just telling chat telling Realm that I got as far as you said, this is what I think. Uh, so, then I had a so, freeze frame so, when you so, smile. So, so they already know. They already know. Um, I think, and Strengths just backed me up on this, he's going to have essentially what amounts to a cameo appearance right at the end of the movie, similar to what Luke had in The Force Awakens. It's going to oh. be one or two lines, and it's going to lead directly into, it's going to foreshadow, post-shadow, the A New Hope. Right, so it'll be like him on the Star Destroyer pursuing Leia's ship. I don't even think it'll be like that involved. I, I really think it'll be a quick cameo. Where like he'll come on there and be like, 
it, it'll be something like, okay, well, where do we go next? And then it'll just be him. Alderaan. See, I, I think if they're going to do something like that, it's going to end on uh, you know, the, the pursuit of the Tanta V4, the opening scene of A New Hope. It's going to be him on the, the bridge of the Star Destroyer, and you see the Tanta V4 in front of them, and they're pursuing. See, and, be- and, and, I, and I don't think so. I think directly it won't, it won't go that far. It'll, it'll just be him either just being there, just standing there, like Strength said, or just saying a single line that'll lead into directly into A New Hope. And, and like I said, the, the best thing would be if he just, like, all are on. You know what I mean? Like, like it just le- like because those who know are gonna be like, oh, yeah. But see, shit. I don't, I don't think he would say Alderon though because they didn't, they didn't pursue them to Alderon. They pursued a ship that happened to be from Alderon. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It's gonna be fun to see. But there's okay. So along with this announcement, they named the other characters, and one of the characters that was named is Forrest Whitaker's character, Saw Guerrera. The interesting thing about this character is this is not a new one. This is a character from the Clone Wars cartoon. Very nice. Yeah, and um, so me and Lucas did the the applicable nerd thing. I came home from work, and uh, we were getting ready to eat dinner, so we turned on Netflix and watched the four-episode arc about Saw Gerrera and then turned right around and watched the trailer to Rogue One immediately after. And nice. uh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's really cool. Saw, Saw Gerrera is a, a pretty interesting character. He's basically, he was there at the very, very, very beginnings of Rebellion. So he's old school. He's as old school as you get as far mm-hmm. as rebels go and um he's more of a fringe type character he has over the years become you might call him a terrorist (laughs) so the rebel alliance doesn't necessarily agree with his tactics okay he's he they're all about the same cause but he doesn't give a shit about the politics of it yeah no no politics barely any morality barely you know freedom at all costs kind of thing He's he's chaotic good. Yes, definitely, definitely go. chaotic good. Yeah, <clears throat> at least he believes himself to be. Um, right. right. So this it'll be really interesting to see him on the on the the big screen. Th- this is what I'm excited about. Okay, I I could be excited because Star Wars is becoming the new Marvel in in the in the aspect of there's a lot to take in. There's a lot there, and there's a lot in the in the universe. There's a lot of story to be told, and a lot of different. Uh, uh, interactions and different relationships and everything else to be to be spoken of and, and told stories about. Okay, you could say it like that. What I'm excited about isn't the fact that I got caught on the very beginning of it. You know, my first one of my first memories in life was watching um, uh, the Battle of Hoth. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, <clears throat> my- in the theater, falling asleep right afterwards because <laughs> I was three. Um, but that's you know, not it's not that I'm that like way back there. It's that this is being told out of chronological order. It's allowing me to see different aspects of it at different times through different eyes. Mm. And it makes it so much more interesting to me. Just the same way that A a Song of Ice and Fire shows each chapter through different perspectives. It can show the same event through two different perspectives and it's like reading two different stories. Um, Right, right. And this kind of seems the same way. Like you're showing me different glimpses of the same universe, the same story. And I know it all wasn't written like forever ago and they're just filling in the gaps, whatever else it's been kind of maneuvered and and finagled as they went along. But it still has that feel to it. Like I'm seeing different, different perspectives on the same general period of history. And it, it just makes it more exciting to me. And I don't know why, but I'm fucking loving it. Yeah, no. And it, not only is it, is it, basically two different stories but it one enhances the other like they seeing something from a different point of view enhances what you got originally and then vice versa you know it's just yep. 
it's just great. Star Wars is just amazing. And now, that being said, I still need to watch Clone Wars. So <laughs> it's a time investment. But I think, I but I think that's it. the only p- piece of the puzzle I'm missing, though. That's the only theatrical, you know, cinema, cinem, cinematic uh, piece of the puzzle that I'm missing. I've seen I've seen all the movies. You know, um, I'm just missing that that cartoon that links it all together right there. So. Yep. Yep. And don't forget about Rebels. Right. Well, I kind of see that as like. Yeah, I mean they go hand in hand. Yeah, I mean Rebels is basically a direct sequel. It's to, the same art style. It's got a lot of the same people involved. So I wouldn't call it the same art style. It, it looks well to me anyway. It looks different. Um, but it's the same the same storytelling style, I guess, because uh, Dave Filoni is the uh, supervising director, so base, basically the showrunner for both series. Um, so it's. Man, imagine yeah. the inside scoop he has. Right, like the imagine the the storyboards that he's seen, you know. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, he was a direct line to George Lucas, yeah. and this, even now, this is what direct you, line to Kathleen Kennedy. Th- this is what you need to write about, or this is what you need to lead up to. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Right. Like, right. Like really? <laughs> and an interesting thing about the Saw Gerrera character, that's a George Lucas creation. Hmm. Uh, George created Saw probably eight or nine years ago. Um, when he was developing the live action TV series that obviously never happened. <laughs> Saul Guerrero was one of the characters that he made for that. Um, so when they were making Clone Wars, I think this was in season five, I think, when uh, that story arc happened with him. Uh, George saw an opportunity during a, a particular storyline. was like, you know what? Let's put Saul in there. I want I want Saul in there. And nice. it worked. And it was – it's um, – it's a really interesting story arc, and it's especially in light of knowing that he's going to be in in Rogue One. It just it, it really, makes so much sense. Really adds to it, and another layer layer of depth in an already infinitely deep storyline. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right, man. Um, let's uh, let's let's go ahead and wrap this up, man. It's been a uh, it's been a fun week. It's been a, it's been a good episode to come back to. You know, technical technical difficulties aside, which I thought I think are hilarious that it's all been on your end with with the <laughs> Skype after I suffered for an hour trying to get everything ready in this jacked up hotel room situation that I have. Um, and a big shout out to my family for trying to keep quiet and, and stay out of the line. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, really and awesome. uh, you know, we're not going to mention the beta beta issues that were going on during the pre show, which were not <laughs> me at all. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. My suffrage of an hour because I've been. <laughs> I, I, look, look, I I need it's a second screen in order to make all this run appropriately. It's actually, a third screen, but anyway. I was gonna the, say you have three screens right now. The hotel, <laughs> the hotel actually glued down, or they like sticky down the TV, so I couldn't just pull it. <laughs> so, it, but it wouldn't fit. So my my son and I actually grabbed it and pulled it off of the stand and brought it over here and put it on the table. So now there's a bunch of like little glue things over there that I'm sure the hotel <laughs> people are gonna love. So. It's been uh, it's been very interesting. It's been pretty awesome. So, yep. <laughs> oh crap! Yeah, so it it's so good to have you back, man. Um, I've while you've been gone, uh, I've been following you on Twitter, which is at where where is that again? Where Ethan are you on Kane, Twitter? At Ethan King. Yes, at Ethan King, and I am at rm underscore del noche, and the show is at ritual misery. Check us out. Yep. Um, and uh, real quick, I'm trying to get a, a Diamond Club B team thing going on, and uh, uh, get some of the some of the other podcasts, the non A list podcasts on Diamond Club to join in, and kind of have a, a little bit of a a, a working group to, uh, you know, rising tides uh, raises all ships. So, um, kind of kind of get get that going, and and I'm really gonna start pressing that pretty soon. We're sending out some emails and uh, getting getting back with some of the people that have that have contacted us. Um, if you're interested in that, just, uh, email us, jo- uh, podcast at ritual And, you know, we, we actually had some viewer feedback and I forgot to mention it earlier. Completely forgot to mention it from, uh, from one of our friends of the show, Kim. And, uh, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Kim says, have you guys seen the movie Knights of Badassdom? You guys will see some recognizable faces. Have you seen that movie, Kent? I, I have not yet, but it is on my watch list on yeah. Netflix. I, I had never even heard of it. 
Yeah, well, so, it's on Netflix. Okay, uh, where, where can I find it? Um, uh, Netflix. Netflix. Okay, what is this? No. <laughs> All right. Well, so, uh, so yeah, nice of bad ass them. We will add that to the show notes for next week. We'll make sure that uh, that we both watch that this week, and we'll get back to you. Thank you for emailing the show, Kim. Really appreciate the feedback and uh, the ideas that you've been kicking out to us. It's been awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks, Kim. Um, so, uh, so yeah, you can, uh, you can find the show, uh, ritual misery dot reddit dot com. You can submit your ideas over there and kick yeah. some more thoughts at us. Um, we really need to, to clean that up actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's got some old crap in there that doesn't belong. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> uh, so make sure that happens. Uh, you can email us podcast at ritual dot com. You can call and leave us a voicemail five, six, seven, six, nine TRMPC. That's five, six, seven, six, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, two. And of course you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritual dot com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening for Kent, for me and for you. This has been your ritual misery podcast. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>